port state control uh, needs to be conducted to verify compliance of ships with the Barrios Water Management Convention. And uh, this is uh, according to the convention and done by national authorities. So uh, in the first place, uh, maritime inspections are uh, doing this, but then later on they may decide uh, if uh, they ask somebody else to do ballast water sampling. They will need to take uh, samples uh, according to the, guide, to the IMO guidelines uh, for uh, compliance monitoring. Uh, so there are two guidelines, uh, G2 for ballast water sampling and port state control uh, guidelines, which uh, a little bit specify how this would need to be taken. In general, uh, each vessel would need to have a sampling point from which ballast uh, water sample at discharge can be taken and then uh, verified for uh, compliance in, in a laboratory or already on ship with some fast tools. It's uh, supposed to be probably somewhere in the area of the ballast water management system or on some vessels, uh, maybe in the pump room, uh, but close to the discharge, uh, as close as possible to the discharge of ballast water from the ship uh, to the sea and uh, designed as isokinetic and according to the rules in, in the G2 guidelines. I'm interested to understand how much water is in the tank at the moment, like the, uh, what is the depth from the point where it will be standing, where is this sounding pipe, to the bottom of the tank, and what is the heading or uh, uh, the water level in the tank, so that I know how much uh, space we have from where we will be standing to the water level in the tank. If it's uh, higher, let's say, I don't know, five, six meters, then you need to understand how much you need to go down to take it from the top, from the middle, yeah. and then from the bottom, yeah, right? Because we said that we take it from three different depths because of, we saw that there may be uh, salinity stratification, organism stratification, and these things, and that's why we need to take it from different depths. This will go down and then you will see you, when we are at, at the depth or when it hits the bottom, the valve opens, opens and gets the sample and you pull it out and, and then we can measure here. Or salinity, this, this is simply refractometer for salinity. These two are for salinity. Well, this one is specifically uh, developed, you see 10 cells because of the standard in 10 cells. Uh, this one is um, indicatively calculating the, the quantity, the, the concentration of uh, phytoplankton in, in the 10 to 50 uh, microns uh, range. We should be somewhere in the water now, on the top of the... So what I do, like it's a little bit like fishing, because this the valve jumps up and uh, let the air go in the water. Yeah, yeah, it, it is in the water. To check salinity, okay, there is little water needed for this. And then you just check it so the light is just perfect to help us. Wow, that's quite showing quite high salinity. Mm -hmm. 
it shows salinity in uh, PSU, practical salinity units, and is correct for, let's say, what is expected uh, in that area. So there is 11, okay, ah, right, you see? Yeah. You hear it? So this is how you hear it when it hits the bottom. And actually the valve opens. And then you just need to pull it out again. So we got now the sample from the very bottom. This is now set up, you see, for 10 milliliters check measurement. Okay, so you need 10 milliliters. I go to 10 mil, put some air in, connect it and pour this out actually, because we don't have a bucket or something here, I drop it back in the tank. So this is 8 microns filter in, so means the organisms smaller than 8 microns which may be many, or are supposed to be uh, not to be here, to influence the measurement. Okay, and this takes about a minute. No tool at the moment uh, is kind of certified or approved because, because they cannot be approved to something. So first you need the, the, the concrete regulation to which can be approved. So there are no measures to which these tools can be uh, approved, but are uh, being developed now and it's good that this <laughs> development proceeds. Uh, and uh, so uh, there are out, but uh, yeah, we need next steps uh, to which this uh, might need to be approved. Yeah. There are no exact uh, rules, so, so this is uh, how, how, how these tests uh, are sub supposed to be done. It's possibly as fast as possible uh, with the methods uh, which are approved, let's say, but approved methods for uh, detailed sampling and analysis. analysis uh, we have these methods approved uh, because uh, same methods are used for type approval of balanced water management systems. Means if this passed with these methods when it was type approved, so check that can be sold to the shipping. And if you apply same methods uh, for port state control, it should be okay. This is clearly stated in the code G8, which is the code to uh, describe what requirements are in place to test the performance of ballast water management systems. And this code says you need to be finished with the sample analysis within six hours after the sample was taken. The storage time between sampling ended and the analysis starts should be as short as possible. The longer you wait, the more you take the risk that organisms may be dying. And this is due to several aspects. One of those is temperature. So imagine you have like ballast water from 15 degrees and you store that in a laboratory fridge until analysis with the fridge is at five degrees and you go for lunch and come back in an hour and then the water temperature drops that may have killed some organisms. So you need to avoid a temperature shock which would kill organisms because then you later cannot say was that because of the storage time that the organisms are all dead or was the treatment system so good. There's two size groups in the IMO D2 standard and one is the equal and above 50 micron. 50 micron is relatively small. 50 micron is approximately the size of a human hair in diameter. So you know that this is a really, really small size. 
and this is already the bigger organisms. The smaller organisms in the D2 standard are below 50 and equal to above 10 micron and this is the size classes we're looking at. With this microscope we look at the 10 to 50 size class. With the stereo microscopes behind me we look into the size class above 50 micron. And interesting is that it's not only the size, it's also the size in a certain dimension and IMO calls this the minimum dimension. It means that the smallest axis of an organism need to be identified. You look at the organism from all sides and on this axis you measure the smallest dimension of the organism body. So you exclude legs and antennas and whatever organisms have. You look at the organism body. I take a photo and then I change to the size measurement and now I would say this is like this. Yeah, so this is 22.1 micron, micrometer in minimum dimension. So we have one survivor on the discharge. Here's another beautiful one. Yeah, I mean there, there's also phytoplankton in, in this shape. See, this is, this is 74.9. This is then too big. There's these two approaches, there's the indicative approach and the detailed approach. The indicative approach is to give you a rough idea. Is there any doubt that the ballast water management system was not working properly or the ballast water does not meet the ballast water performance standard as set by the IMO convention? And you can do the detailed analysis as a second step to prove that the doubt from the indicative analysis was actually correct. You don't need to fulfill this order, you can do the detail also in the first place, but you can do an indicative followed by a detail. And the detailed analysis is then to double check and to kind of court proof do the counts of organisms. This is done by an expert because the expert needs to identify if an organism is in the right size and if an organism is living or not. <laughs> 